back in May, the opening of an Iranian factory in the Central Asian Republic of Tajikistan passed without much attention. The facility, which will produce drones, was the first of its kind that Iran has built in a foreign country. Tajikistan, which has close economic and defense ties with Iran, said it welcomed the help in upgrading its military equipment and that the two would work together to combat terrorism. The factory will reportedly produce the Ababil 2 drone, which Tehran says has a range of nearly 200 kilometers. Although a relatively minor player in global drone exports, Iranian UAVs have been used in conflict areas in Iraq, Lebanon and Yemen. Saudi Arabia has also accused Iran of supplying drones to Houthi rebels in Yemen, saying the hardware was behind the 2019 attack that cut Saudi oil production by nearly half. So what impact will Iran's growing drone capabilities have for Central Asia, especially in the aftermath of the Taliban's takeover and in the broader region, including Syria and the South Caucasus? And to discuss what Iran's growing drone power in Central Asia could mean, joining me now from Izmir is Ulaş Pehlivan. He is a security analyst and a retired colonel from the Turkish military. And Ismail Sarı, who is an associate professor at Ankara Hacı Bayram Veli University. Gentlemen, welcome to Straight Talk. It's good to have you on the program. So, Ulaş, what's the significance of the opening of an Iranian drone factory in Tajikistan? And why has Iran chosen Tajikistan to be the first country to host such a facility? Okay. Uh, I can say that Iran's rapprochement to Central Asia is not a new thing. As you know, until 2021, there were uh, sanctions imposed on Iran, and it was illegal to import and export sales. And uh, just after one year of uh, the lifting of the sanctions, we can see that Iran is trying to um, uh, enlarge its sphere of influence through Central Asia. Uh, in this international context, it becomes even an uh, obligation because uh, Central Asian states, they are offering uh, wide doors of opportunity to Iran. And we can say that uh, currently Central Asian states are, uh, want, they want to be less independent on R Russian defense industry, and they are landlocked countries. Uh, and they have shortest path to the high seas through uh, Iranian seaports. Yes. And after the lifting of uh, Iran's weapons export, Iran chosen uh, Tajikistan because uh, Turkey has rather uh, weaker country, uh, cooperation with Taj Tajikistan compared, compared to Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, and Kazakhstan. Yes. And uh, I can say that uh, Persian language and culture is very widespread in Tajikistan. For this reason, Iran is choosing easier targets uh, to uh, enlarge its sphere of influence uh, like Tajikistan. Mm -hmm. So Ismail, what is Iran's market share when it comes to uh, drones? Is it a big or relatively minor player at the moment? Yeah. Uh, in October 2020, the arms sanctions against Iran ended. Currently, Iran is uh, able to import all kinds of uh, equipment and weapons uh, it needs uh, and exports it uh, locally uh, products weapons to uh, its neighbors and other countries. Uh, of course, this is uh, theoretic theoretically possible. Uh, in this way, Iran is able to obtain foreign exchange income. Uh, mm -hmm. The drone market is also important for Iran. Iran wants to uh, improve its economic relation as well as its uh, military relation with Central Asia countries. As a, uh, a resistance economy, Iran's goal of expanding trade with uh, its uh, eastern uh, neighbors uh, is closely tied to uh, decide to uh, insulate itself from uh, the effect of uh, Western economic pressure. Yes. Uh, Iran, uh, yeah, okay. So we can say that the sanctions made Iran's defense industry more uh, self sufficient, Ulos, uh, Ulash. And could the opening of this joint drone factory push Israel to shift its focus on Tajikistan as well? What are the risks, uh, risks for Dushanbe? I mean, could it become a uh, secondary target for Tel Aviv? Actually, uh, Iran has already conducted attacks on Iran uh, in previous years, and recently uh, they still continue to its attacks. 
But as a third country, Tajikistan, I, I think this uh, kind of operation or uh, such an involvement to a third country it can draw too much reactions and Israel cannot afford this in his diplomacy, in his diplomacy, I think. So we know Turkey is also a major drone fa manufacturer and exporter. And um, are we seeing the beginnings of a drone arms race in the region uh, where countries are looking to use military hardware and trade also to coordinate their security policies, Ismail? Uh, in fact, of the likely motivation behind Iran's drone factory in Dushanbe is uh, competition with the Turkey in uh, Tajik and Central Asia market. Uh, in April 2022, uh, several weeks before Iran uh, inaugurated the factor, Turkey reportedly sold the Bayraktar TB2 to Tajikistan. Uh, Turkey has already equipment uh, Azerbaijan with Bayraktar drones and uh, sold them to other Central Asian uh, states. Uh, Turkey has a better change to increase uh, its uh, share of the drone market in the uh, Central Asia region. Uh, Iran has shown that it's seeking to increase its military and uh, defense capabilities and uh, has uh, planned to sell and export weapons to uh, countries in the region uh, by leading, uh, lifting sanctions on arms. So, Ulash, we know that Turkey and Iran support opposing sides in the South Caucasus, Syria, Libya and Iraq, but still manage to maintain some sort of a, a stable relationship. Could one day Iranian and Turkish drones encounter each other uh, in these uh, areas? Uh, actually, uh, I think uh, the drone factory, uh, as you know, uh, will produce a Babil II in uh, Dushanbe, Tajikistan. A Babil 2 is compared to TB2 or Akinji is much less performant when compared. So in terms of cooperation in short term, uh, we, we will not be affected uh, from this kind of competition. But in uh, long term, um, Iran uh, may try to increase its strength. Uh, I can say that uh, when Iran was under sanctions, it was in a closed system. For this reason, it couldn't develop uh, sophisticated weapons uh, and it could just receive partial uh, technology transfer from China or Russia. For this reason, uh, they are just beginners, in my opinion, uh, to compete with Turkey. And uh, when we compare bilateral trade volumes, we see that Turkey has uh, $10 billion trade volumes with Central Asia while Iran has just uh, $1.3 billion. So maybe after 10 years, Iran uh, will try to keep up with Turkey's level. And additionally, Turkey has, has as you know, uh, special bonds, historical, social, cultural, and economic bonds with Central Asia. We have many various platforms, organization of Turkish speaking states, etc. Uh, for this season, Taj uh, Iran, as I said you before, uh, preferred to start with Tajikistan, where Turkey is, Turkey's relations are rather weaker than the other for Central Asian states. So, uh, Ismail, is a power vacuum forming in Central Asia and is Iran trying to fill that with its uh, drone factory? Can we say now that the uh, ongoing Ukraine crisis, Central Asian countries are turning their backs to Russia? Uh, Iran doesn't have a significant military relationship with the Central Asia countries. It's a low policies that are uh, compatible with Russia. Uh, but now Iran is moving field a gap left uh, by United States and Russia. Uh, Iran is moving to exploit the power vacuum in Central Asia to advantage its uh, foreign policy uh, priorities. Uh, Iran has been increasing its uh, outreach uh, to its Central Asia uh, neighbors. Uh, power like the United States and Russia uh, are uh, sh shifting their uh, focus. Uh, competition uh, is uh, Europe and uh, Asia Pacific. Uh, maybe we can say that uh, Iran uh, look at uh, to. Uh, Central Asia. Central Asia is uh, very, very important uh, for Iran uh, after withdrawal uh, by United States.
uh, in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. So, Ulash, we know that the Saudi Arabia has capitalized on occasional rifts uh, between Iran and Tajikistan in the past. So have Saudi efforts to deepen cooperation, economic engagement with Tajikistan helped counter Iranian influence or both sides have benefited from that? Uh, actually, in my opinion, Saudi Arabia's uh, interference or uh, interest in Tajikistan uh, comes uh, politically at first. And uh, I, I mean, as you know, they have a kind of uh, Salafist agenda and uh, they have a kind of radical uh, views in terms of politics. And they have also uh, trying to trying to increase its uh, political uh, interference or political clout in, in Tajikistan. But uh, economic, of course, they will use economical means uh, to to increase their influence. But uh, I think that Saudi Arabia uh, will not be after, let's say, the leaving of Russia or Russia reducing its power influence in uh, Tajikistan. Uh, the the first countries to fill its gap, the the Russians' gap, is first China, then Turkey, maybe then comes Iran, and uh, then comes uh, Saudi Arabia. All right, gentlemen. All right. Unfortunately, we'll have to leave it here. Thank you very much for joining me on Straight Talk.